not just used to <laughs> <Good girl. laughs> Aloha kakahiaka. Good morning. Good morning, Jesus. May his Holy Spirit wrap his arms, his loving arms around you. Can you heal us? Blood from head to toe. And we have gathered to worship you, Lord. Our Savior. We're going to begin with our Meli Homai Kai as we come and rest our spirits in you, Lord. We come hungry and we come thirsty for your word. We come to place our trust in you, our God, our Creator, our Maker. Let us begin with hungry. One, two, three. Jesus is the answer. Okay, uh... 
We thank you, Father, for this time that you had allocated for us to come together and worship you with our every being. We thank you, Lord, that no matter the circumstances, Father, you lift us up. And we awaken to the new day. And we are so grateful for the breath of life and for every opportunity that you bestow upon us to worship you, to learn more about you, to walk in the simple ways of Jesus Christ, that we would learn to love others. And so, Father, we come into your very presence this morning for our souls long to be fed. Open our ears, open our eyes, and our hearts to this very day to hear your words of hope and healing for us. May our worship continue to give you glory in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Aloha. <laughs> God is good. All the time and all the time, God is good, amen. I sound like a mess, but I feel great. <laughs> and I'm so grateful that I work where I do because they swab me. Make sure. <laughs> but it, it, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Yesterday we celebrated my grandson's birthday. That's a sharing of joys in this time of uh, announcement. And uh, he's 14 years old, it's Donovan. The one that used to come here, he's wow. a big one four and um, embarking in his, you know, years of, uh, what, junior? Yeah, mm -hmm. the beginning of high school, you know, and in this pandemic, you know. And so they had, uh, they had a gathering at our house and we provided and made sure it's sanitized all over the place and uh, they were outside, so. It, it, they, you know, they're all into this gaming stuff, so they had a challenge. It was something I couldn't get into, but I praise God for his life. He's a good kid thus far, you know, and I can only hope that God will continue to work um, in him and through him for God's purposes. So uh, continuing on in our service, uh, I mean, in our uh, greetings, one of us. <laughs> Let me see. Is it, is it ours? Take <laughs> five. One. Is it me? I don't know. Wait. I just need it. Oh, I know. The key was in my pocket. Oh, that's her. Is that mine? It was out. Yeah, that must be mine. Oh, I don't know what we did. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know, Keith. <laughs> that was exciting. The silver SUV. I'm to give you pause. Yeah, yeah, he gave pause. Pause, let's start this again. <laughs> no. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to take my own. Is that me? The gray SUV. Ah, oh, that's not me. I don't know keys, so I don't know. Okay, greetings and announcements and a sharing of joys and concerns. Anybody else has any joys, joys <laughs> things that happened besides what I'm going to announce pretty soon? Hola, uh, none? none? I, I, I got one to share. Yes. Um, oh, I, uh, I was... I had a good thing. I took out one side tube and then pretty soon I'm going to take out the other side. I also had awesome. a better news than that. Is it on? 
Okay, so Olaa, this is again our certificate, which we have a whole bunch of them in the in the sanctuary for every year. Where's she gotta find her key? She doesn't even know where it is. It's probably in the car. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this from the United Church of Christ, thanking all of our me us members for being a five for five congregation of the United Church of Christ in 2020. As we continue the church's wider mission, all these collections, <clears throat> besides Huomo, Huomo is separate, but all these collections um, put us on the board. And what that does also, thank, thanks to Judy and stewardship, um, is it allows us, when we needed money, like for the roof, the funding, it gave us a, a open doors. Yeah, know. it opens the doors anyway, for things like all that. Very good, um, you know, the five uh, right. very, very good collections. Well, not only for our churches here in Hawaii, yes. but throughout the world. Yes. So thank you very much, Judy, for that. Again, any birthdays? Any celebrations? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we move on. Oh. Our call to worship, and I ask all those who are able to stand, please stand. Our call to worship is from Isaiah 25, verse 1. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things planned long ago. Amen. Our Kapuli Ho'omana, or our invocation this morning, brothers and sisters. Father God, as we sang this morning to you in our praise and worship, from the highest of heights to the depth of the sea, we proclaim your majesty. We come together this morning in fellowship, Lord, to praise your name. And so we welcome you in this morning, Father God, with open arms we welcome you into this fellowship, into this service this morning. And we come humbly with adoration. <clears throat> you are a God that calls every star by name. 
and you love each one of us, and we are so appreciative of that. And so we come here and gather in that appreciation, and in the words that Jesus gave us, let us all join together now for our Kapuli Akahaku, the Lord's Prayer in unison. Remain standing for the Kahimin Veheana, the opening hymn, Ku Alla Kai, He Leadeth Me.
Let us pray. Heavenly gracious Father, you are the God of peace and the God of hope. And we are your children, focused on you this day and this moment. From every way that the wind has blown, you are there. In the beginning of time, when there was nothing but mass, you were there. We thank you, Lord. You are our creator. The creator of this universe in which we now see. With the naked eye. But you call us to come closer to you. So that we could see it with the spiritual eye. We thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings you bestowed upon us in this lifetime. We thank you, Lord, that we are here in America. And we thank you, Lord, that in America we have news about the world abroad. We thank you for all the many different technologies and science, the talents and gifts of many. We thank you because you are the giver of these gifts. Help us, Lord, to realize you are not to be honored after the fact. You are before it all. We thank you, Lord, for the hope that you have given us when you gave this world your son. When the first of humankind had to be stricken from the Garden of Eden for our imperfectness, you sent us your son. And he's the only way, the truth, and the light that we have to set our lives upon. The way in which it would show us the God that we serve how kind and gracious he is, how much mercy he would have for, what, for, for each and every person, why he would send his son to be a living sacrifice and an atonement for our sins. So Father, we just thank you. And we know that your will will be done. Help us, Lord through your word, through the Holy Spirit's guidance, to transform us into all that you would have us to be, to lead a life that gets your approval, your acceptance, to be the children of God that you call us. We thank you for our Savior, for all that he has done and continues to do in our lives. Help us, Lord, to place our full trust in you. Help us to know that no matter what end of the stick we have for the day, <laughs> it holds no end for the hope that we have with eternity with you. 
So Lord, we just lift up the names upon our hearts that we have been praying over, Lord, for all those that are suffering, for those that you call us to pray for, to help. From the beginning of time, you had laid it out in your word, never to forget another. Father, we lift up their names to you as they continue to struggle in their ways. May they struggle knowing that their hope is in you. That they would call you God. Make you Lord of their lives. We ask for your healing hands over this entire nation. And we just thank you for the breath of life and for all that you continue to do in our lives. Take us to no end to give of ourselves for our brothers. All of this and more. We pray fervently to you for you hear and answer our prayers. The prayers of your faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. At this time we move on to our Kahavi. Anna in a high aloha, our offering invitation. Just as Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. As we have been granted great abundance through the presence of God in our lives, let us offer up those blessings with gratitude, heartfelt commitment, and praise unto our God. Our Himeni Lulu are offering him, take my gifts and let me love you. in Hawaiian. our hearts are here, 
our hearts for you and your work, Lord. May it touch all of those that are needing your word in their lives and that we get to be a part of that. We are so thankful. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Please be seated. And at this time, we move on to our Kaolelo Bai Bala, our scripture reading, John 6, 1 through 21. 1 through 21. Please use your Bibles to follow along. I will be reading from a New American Standard Bible version. Hear the reading of his word. After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd was following him because they were watching the signs which he was performing on those who were sick. But Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews was near. So Jesus, after raising his eyes and seeing that a large crowd was coming to him, said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? But he was saying this only to test him, for he himself knew what he intended to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not enough for them for each to receive just a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are these for so many people? Jesus said, have the people recline to eat. Now there was plenty of grass in the palace, uh, in the place, sorry, so the men reclined about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves and after giving thanks, he distributed them to those who were reclining. Likewise, also of the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he said to the disciples, gather up the leftover pieces so that nothing will be lost. So they gathered them up and, t and filled 12 baskets with pieces from the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Therefore, when the people saw the sign which he had performed, they said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. So Jesus, aware that they intended to come and take him, by force to make him king, withdrew again to the mountain by himself alone. Now when evening came, his disciples went to the sea, and after getting into a boat, they started to cross the sea to Capernaum. It had already become dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. In addition, the sea began getting rough because a strong wind was blowing. Then, when they had rowed about 25 or 30 stadia, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were frightened. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. So they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. This is the reading of his word. May the Lord add his blessings upon it. Amen. Amen. We move on to our now Kamanao, the message for today. Excuse me. God's abundant presence. Before I begin, I ask that you would unite your hearts with me again in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you are ever present and moving amongst your people. Draw near to us, Father God. No matter the circumstances, Father, remain with us and have us 
comprehend and understand that you are always with us. That we can replace our loneliness. We can replace our, our times of need with knowing that our needs are fulfilled in you. Make us aware of your very presence this day and bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts to be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So today's message, I wanted to point out how it begins talking about signage. Signs, everybody say signs. There's signs everywhere. Signage is very important in many contexts. Now along the highway, right? We need signs, especially when we don't know where we are. In a city or a town, as you try to find your way, in an airport, <laughs> in an airport as you connect to your next flight, in an office building, as you locate the office you want to do business in, a park as you see, as you seek the desired hiking trail if you're going hiking, all signages. In the grocery store, trying to find a certain product. In fact, most recently, I was going up and down an aisle and couldn't believe in KTA. I was looking for, a, it's a heavy cream. My daughter-in-law wanted it. So I went to the yogurt area first, right? Couldn't find it. And that was closer to the deli. Went through the bakery, couldn't find it. You know where it was? <laughs> Had another dairy area, kind of. The eggs, <laughs> where the eggs was. And I don't know if you know KTA. That's all the way on the other side. <laughs> so I was like hunting. I was even looking in the ice cream section, but signs. <laughs> Thank you, now I know it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it was, it was uh, kind of fun. I was laughing at myself, trying to think of this. But signs, signs help you to find places. It is even an academic discipline science. They call it wayfinding. Everybody say wayfinding. 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 That which encompasses all of the ways in which people and animals orient themselves in physical space and navigate from place to place. We are wayfinders, they say. Sojourners in the way of Jesus. So the word signs occurs many times in our lives. People ask Jesus for a sign, right? They ask for a sign of the end times. When is it going to be? Mark 13, verse 4. The Pharisees argued with him, wanting a sign. We need a sign from heaven to test Jesus. Mark 8, 11. The Lord himself used this term when he spoke about the case of Jonah being delivered from the great fish as a sign of Jesus' coming, his coming resurrection. There shall be, there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of Jonah, the prophet, Matthew 12, 39. The Gospel of John uses this term throughout Whenever the Lord performs a miracle, this, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee. What did he do? Turn the water, Turn the water into wine. He manifested his glory there. Today, we will consider two signs found in our reading by looking at Jesus' own interpretation of these two miracles. The first one being, Jesus feeds 5,000. It begins by saying, sometime after this, after Jesus had healed the paralyzed man at the pool, after he had been challenged for working on the Sabbath and defended himself by appealing to his oneness with God the Father and the common authority he possessed as a member 
of the Godhead. And after he had spoken of his confirmation from the Father, that is the immediate background of today's first sign. So the crowd was intrigued by him, right? And they started gathering and following him and gathered round the hills in what today is known as the Golan Heights. Verse four has the little sentence, the Jewish Passover festival was near. This statement that is in John is because this is where we learn about the teaching that Jesus gives about the bread of life being given for the life of the world. And we know today that that is Jesus, amen. The story continues with Jesus asking Philip how they would feed them. How will they feed all of those people? He knows how, but he wanted to help Philip's faith along. Philip replies, well, we could buy them lunch, but that would take 200 denarii. Anybody get 200 denarii out there? A denarii was a day's wage for a laborer in Palestine. So if we use a minimum wage of $10 an hour, right, as a guide, an eight-hour day would be $80. $80. $80 a day, or for 200 days, it would be a total of $16,000. So let's say we have a gathering of some kind at a park in our community with music and a speaker, and someone suggests we should feed the crowd and they get some sandwich basics, maybe, you know, salad and juice and coffee, it would be $16,000. We might look at each other and say, uh, <laughs> I think we possibly could raise that if we was given some time, right? But there is no way we have that much on hand right now. Oi, hey, who has it on hand? No, <laughs> like, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, we probably wouldn't have that on hand. This is the dilemma that Philip figures out. So another disciple, Andrew, has thought that maybe they could pool the lunches on hand. So they start soliciting and all they have is one boy, right? One boy with five loaves and a couple of fish. Still no way enough because the crowd at the park is 5,000 men plus women and children, maybe about 20,000 or more. In verse 10 through 12, Jesus Christ shows he can supply the needed resource, amen? amen. Just like he did the water into wine for the wedding at Canaan. He blesses God the Father perhaps with the com commonly used prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And then he multiplies the fish and the loaves with and enough, more than enough for everyone. All that they wanted and 12 baskets left over. And after the people saw the sign, Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Yeah? yeah? So they saw and they believed. They started to believe. Signs are very important. They point to something. The people see this sign as pointing to the person of Jesus. He is the prophet who is to come into the world. Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19 references that. And he is the fulfillment of that promise from Moses. So this is all good so far. A prophet who provides food and victory. As Moses, right, 
provided through God manna in the wilderness and deliverance from Egypt. But not far enough seeing him as their deliverer from sin. Then we talk about the second miracle. Jesus walks on water. All four of the Gospels have the feeding of the 5,000 mentioned. And only three of them follow it with this incident of Jesus walking on water. The disciples had cast off to cross the Sea of Galilee. And, and we talked about what happens in the Sea of Galilee. When the winds blow up and they do that often it becomes a hailing storm jesus had withdrawn to a mountain for some time alone i'm sure he spent that time with god and then later he approaches the 12 he's about five to six kilometers out on the lake while a strong wind blows the waters rough and rugged where the disciples are. And they were afraid of the storm and then they saw someone walking on the water. Now this is dark. I don't know about you, they was afraid of the storm or they was more afraid of that thing walking on the water. I'm pretty sure both. <laughs> Jesus told them not to be afraid. And then Jesus got into the boat. And when they were willing to have him, they reached land. So here we have the two signs for today. They both point to Jesus as the creator who made the world in the first place and can multiply food supplies as happens in the order of things now with crops of wheat and fish in the waters. And he can overcome the laws of physics. He doesn't have to wait for a scientist to discover it. Because he was there in the very beginning. I believe Jesus wants us to see who he truly is. Not just for the miracles. Especially not for the miracles. Because that's what... People want, right? You see a good thing, what do you want? I want another, or I want more of that good thing. But that wasn't his purpose. It was all about who God is, amen? amen. We read about Jesus Christ, we need to pay attention to him as a person not just to what he does. We need to think through why he came into this world in the first place. We need to think through why we're here. Why are we here? To find relationship and make babies? You know, like I used to hear that and laugh because they joke about it. But we truly need to look beyond physical supplies like food and places to live, a car, and everything, education, everything falling into our laps. We need to look more to the person who governs these things and who came to give us life free from sin and its consequences and to give us peace in the storm. And we need to examine our hearts and see, is our heart truly reliant on him? There's three in one. God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three in one. We are not alone. God's abundant presence. Do we truly hold that in our hearts? That's my message for today. May God be with you and bless you abundantly. Amen? Amen. 
our Kahimeni Hoku, the closing hymn. Turn your eyes, therefore, on Jesus. Sorry, but I know in your program you're going to have to flip because the song is in between the pages.
Kapuli Ho'oku, the benediction. God's love is overwhelming. As we have been fed this very day, let us go and offer food and drink to others. Grant us holy instincts of faith as we trust in you, O oh God, to place the final touches on our culinary masterpieces with you. Your very presence is with us always. God's abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a very blessed Sunday.